Postseason is here for a handful of teams around the South Plains, and for the rest, it's time to say, well, maybe next season. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Football Fever here on LISD TV, your source for high school football here on the South Plains. I'm Travis Cram, and to my left is the new head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Really? Because I didn't get that alert. Okay, never mind. It's George Watson <laughs> with the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Well, I don't know if I want that job now. I don't want that. I'm, I'm, not, no. a, I'm not as much of a yes you. man as, as he may on, need. I'll stay on the sidelines. Exactly. Watch. Well, let's get right to this last week's regular season finale and the start with the big matchup in 2-3A as Estacado and Cooper met for the district championship in George Cooper. Not a bad team. No. Shown so much over the last few weeks, but obviously this Estacado team means a lot this season to what could be a pretty nice run in the playoffs. Absolutely. You know, I, th I thought Cooper played about as well against Estacado as anybody has all year. I mean, they forced a lot of turnovers. They were able to move the ball at times and, and, and do a lot of good things both offensively and defensively. But like you said, I think we saw why Estacado is what Estacado is because their, their athletic ability, their speed was just too much for Cooper to handle. Uh, you know, and that was what, ab what abled uh, Estacado to actually overcome all those turnovers that, you know, and, and still score 40 points and still rack up the yardage they did. I mean, credit Cooper for, for doing a good job, but I think we see why Estacado is, is poised to maybe make a run three or four rounds deep in the playoffs just because they have the athletic ability to be able to overcome those kind of turnovers and overcome those kind of mistakes. And, you know, and, you know without those mistakes, it, it could have been a, a much bigger margin of victory. But, yeah, credit Estacado for getting the job done. And credit Cooper. I think they go into the playoffs with a lot of confidence off of that game. Yeah, we mentioned it last week. Both teams already knew who they're playing. Mm -hmm. They're the number one seeds in each of the two playoffs for that three, class 3A. Another team trying to just make the playoffs. Monterey taking on Lubbock High. The Spurs game, more than just pride this year. It's four bid in the playoffs. Monterey, Lubbock High comes out swinging, gets yep. up that seven nothing lead, but then Monterey just establishes that that ground game and just runs away with it literally. Yeah, it, it was a, a good job by Monterey. You know, they kind of took what Coronado did the week before against Lubbock High, and Mike Speck talked about it. You know, they just, were just able to dominate up front with the offensive line and get the running game going. Uh, you know, 409 yards of, of, of just rushing. Uh, in that game, you know, between Thomas Walker and Brady Gunn. And then, you know, they, they get the win, they, and they pretty much put it away early. And then it was really kind of a, a surreal scene. It was, it was one of those deals like, you know, nobody wanted to leave, but they, they didn't want to leave because they didn't know, you know, how their season was going to go because they're all sitting there with, with iPhones out, you know, talking, texting to people in, in San Angelo, trying to figure out what's going on in San Angelo and, and you know, between San Angelo Central and, and, uh, and Tascosa. And finally, you know, we were listening up in, in the press box on, on, on radio, on Internet, and it was kind of a delayed reaction. We knew what happened. We were waiting for the, the, the reaction down the field. And when, and when the reaction came, it was just a, a, a big, giant sigh of relief almost you know, for, for Monterey to get that final playoff spot. And now they go into the playoffs, and, and we'll see what they can do. Should be interesting uh, coming in uh, you know, coming in as, as a 2-8 and eight team. But you know, credit to Monterey for getting the job done on Friday night. Yeah, you got to feel good for Todd Pearson and that group getting a chance to go, go into the postseason mm -hmm. this year. Unfortunately, that also means the end of the season for Coronado. Having to face the number one team in the Amarillo Sandys this past weekend, and I mean, you see exactly why Amarillo yeah. is the team that they are. Absolutely. Amarillo is an outstanding football team running the football and, and on that defense, and they were able to shut Coronado down. And, you know, I know Coronado is disappointed, but, you know, it's, it's like a lot of teams around the area. You know, they had their fate in their own hands for a good part of the season and just didn't just weren't able to capitalize on it and that's then they had to rely on other people and honestly you know going into the weekend I thought Coronado had a better shot at getting in the playoffs I thought Tascosa would go down to Central and, and win but credit Central they've been playing outstanding football for about the last two or three weeks and they got the job done at home and then that leaves Coronado out so I know Coronado disappointed but you know they've got some things they need to work on and, and next year just come in and try not to you know let your fate be in somebody else's hands. And obviously you go back to that one point loss to Monterey earlier in the season and how mm -hmm. that kind of started changing things yep. in the playoff picture. Another team sitting out of the playoffs this year but trying to establish something heading into next season, the Friendship Tigers under coach Brad Davis. Getting a nice little win to end the season, shutting out Dumas in this one. Yeah, where's this been all year? No, you know, thirty question. to nothing, thirty to nothing against Dumas, and you know, just this is the kind of friendship team I think we thought we would see all along. And I think the big key was you had a, a healthy Bobby Huey back there. You know, he has been hampered, you know, all year with this hamstring injury, and really never got healthy until the final game. And then we saw what can happen when he goes out there and, and has a healthy leg and has a healthy two legs, 195 yards, couple touchdowns, and you know, and and friendship was able to dominate the way they're supposed. 
those two, and then credit that defense. You know, so, you know, a good way to end the season on a disappointing season for friendship, but, yeah, a good way to uh, maybe get some momentum going into the offseason for friendship. And you mentioned this matchup heading into this one, Bushland and Roosevelt. Uh, you know, one of those where the, the teams were kind of already arranged. We weren't sure how it would be mm -hmm. as far as number one, number two, number three. Bushland coming out strong in this one and really kind of shutting down Roosevelt. Yeah, very impressed with Bushland. You know, it's, it's been uh, up and down a little bit in district season for them, but, uh, you know, credit Bushland for coming out and, and really getting their offense going. You know, with, with a Roosevelt team, I think you know you're going to be in a high-scoring game, and, 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 Rose, and Roosevelt still scored 40 points for 39 points uh, in that game, but they were just defensively weren't able to match Bushland. And, and you feel bad for, for a Roosevelt team I mean, because they were out of the postseason picture. They were just trying to end on a good note. But, you know, still a good season for, for, for Roosevelt, but just too much for Bush. And I see, you know, we can see now that top three of Muleshoe, uh, Littlefield, and Bush in that district very, very strong and just kind of a step above everybody else in that district. Farwell and Spring Lake Earth are competing for that 3-1-A Division II championship in this one, a matchup of two. 3-0 teams in district, and George Farwell just edging out Spring Lake Earth in this one. Yeah, a very outstanding good football game for, for both these teams, and, you know, two teams that, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to give Farwell credit. I thought that Spring Lake Earth was maybe a step ahead of them, but being at home, Farwell played very well, actually overcame a couple touchdown deficits early in the game, able to get back in that game in the, in the second quarter with straight, three straight touchdowns and, and take that 21-14 lead, and, and, you know, after that, Spring Lake Earth just never could seem to get the tide turned back in their favor, but I, I think it'll end up being a good game for Spring Spring Lake Earth to go into the playoffs with. I think it'll be a good game for, for Farwell to go into the playoffs with, and, and maybe two teams that, that, that might be poised for, for long district or long uh, playoff runs. But yeah, credit Farwell for doing an outstanding job, and, and Spring Lake Earth for staying right with them. It was, it was just a good, solid football game, the kind of district championship football game you look for. Okay, when we come back, George will introduce you to the man behind center for the Plainsman as Monterey runs into the playoffs. Our AJ Player of the Week is next.